Well, good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the painting studio, and uh, it's been a while since I put a video together. So the next project that I'm going to work on is a wood duck drake. And I thought the wood duck drake is different enough in its geometry from the mallard drake, the mallard hen, and the canvas backs that we've done in previous videos. So I'll take this carving from beginning to end. I already have a painting video for a wood duck drake available for sale on my website at tomchristyart.com. That's about a 50 minute video that'll take you from beginning to end if you want to paint a wood duck drake. Uh, so we won't be doing a painting video for the YouTube channel, but a full blown carving video to get you from start to finish on a carved wood duck drake. If you're valuing the content of my uh, channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the likes, I appreciate it, that helps me out. That way you'll get notification of any new content as I add it to the channel. And I'm excited, we're almost to 1500 subscribers, that's fantastic, and it feels like we're building kind of a virtual carving club and I'm hoping that it's a, uh, useful to new carvers out there and carvers that have been doing it for a while as well. The feedback has been great. I appreciate it. It's been encouraging. So let's get started on the wood duck drape. Okay, you kind of know the routine from my previous videos on pattern making and some of the other uh, decoys that I've done. But uh, I've got my projector set up. This is uh, the wood duck that I want to create a pattern from. I've got an older pattern here uh, because a lot of people want to know, well, how do you know you have the right size? And I just uh, move this around until I hit the body size that I know I've used before. And then I also have a head pattern here from a and these are not going to be exact, but they're going to get me in the ballpark on the bill length. You can use a reference bill as well to get a bill dimension. Use a pattern book like Pat Godden's pattern books to get a length from breast to tail. That'll get you in the right ballpark. And uh, I've got this where I want it. And now I'm just going to take my time and trace around. And I'm not going to have you watch me trace the whole thing because that gets boring very quick. But that's kind of the process for creation of a pattern, just as a reminder. Okay, I've got my pattern traced. But a lot of times what I like to do is do a combination of bodies, heads. I've got a couple of additional pictures here. And I want to project those on this tracing and maybe make a few tweaks. There's a, there's a nice peek at a speculum here that I may want to build into the model. This is a little higher head, but from a very low profile on the water, so I could check this depth. So I just think it's a good idea to overlay some good pictures and then use that to come up with kind of a hybrid pattern of a combination of, of good pictures. Okay, it's kind of noisy with the projector, but I hope you can see this. I moved the projector around until I get the body size similar to my previous tracing. And uh, just checking some things, the the, uh, a completely different picture. You can see the breast is a little stretched out and forward in this position. The head's a little higher, but the stripes line up here. The side pocket length looks good. The height of the back, I may go a little bit higher on that. The uh, Primaries are raised much higher in this position and that pulls that speculum out. So I may want to think about that. I'm just going to kind of sketch in their position there. 
The tail here is a little thicker, and I like that. So I'm going to make that change, but overall it looks pretty good. Now let's put the third picture on and see what that looks like. All right, I've got the third picture up there, and uh, that picture was in the opposite orientation, and that's an advantage of the tracing paper. I was able to just flip the pattern that I traced so the pencil's on the back side now, but I can still take a look at this compared to this particular bird. And this is a higher head position again. Uh, the breast, when the when it raises up like this, is going to pull in a little bit. So this breast in this position with the head down a little further is a little more prominent here. Length looks good. Side pocket looks a little longer on this bird. You can see the positions have changed a little bit here, but I'm going to stick with these positions because I like this breast position and head position here. Body height looks good. The, the uh, primaries are in the same location. I kind of like the thickness of this tail, so I'm going to add a little thickness there on my pattern. And the other thing I want to do, I really like the head on this bird that's underneath, so I'm going to line up my head with that, and then we'll come back and take a look at that. I just shifted my pattern around until I lined up with the head that's underneath. There are a few differences you can see. The back of this crest is a little different, and I'm going to just sketch that in lightly to consider that so that I, I can look at both of those positions. One thing I don't like about that in particular is it's down to where it's almost touching the back, and I like this little higher crest, but I may look at the shape of this and maybe change this a little bit on this pattern. Overall though I'm happy with the pattern and now we can look in good lighting and do some final adjustments on the pattern. Okay I've taken another sheet of tracing paper going back this is the the one we put together with the projector going back and uh, I like this crest shape, so I'm going to do that, but I also wanted the head a little higher. So I put a little additional neck in this version of the pattern, raised the head up. And now here's kind of where the pattern stands. And I also put 5 8 draft. This is the water line. Uh, depending on what you're going to do with your decoy, whether it has to float or not, that determines uh, how much draft you're going to want. So I'm finished with the bird. Take, taking a look at uh, kind of a, a previous pattern, just some final looks. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to make the cardboard pattern and uh, move on to band sawing. All right, I've got nice pieces of Tupelo selected. I've got the patterns drawn on, as you've seen in other videos, so I won't repeat that here. And now we'll bandsaw the body and the head out. I'm speeding up the video two times here uh, so we can just watch the entire process uh, in less time. But just know that, that I wouldn't be cutting quite this fast uh, under normal conditions. So I've got the top piece cut off. I want to retain that. Now I'm going to go back and bandsaw in that little area behind the neck. I just find it easier to go back and do that separately than try to follow that tight curve around on the initial cut. So I've got that cut out. 
Now I'm going back to the primaries, separating those from the tail area. Cutting that area under the tail, leaving plenty of wood on that tail uh, because that tail is quite cup shaped in a drake wood duck. Cutting that final breast curve. Now I've used a couple of nails to tack on that top profile like you've seen in previous videos. And I've got that lined up so that I know the top pattern is in alignment with the side profile pattern. And now I'm just going to cut around that profile and I'll speed the video up here. So this is two times speed. So you want to cut slower than this uh, when you're actually doing it. And on a puddle duck, you can see there's uh, quite a bit of a ramp under the tail there. So you need to regrip and make sure you hold on tight because the bandsaw has a tendency to want to pull that tail area down. So you need to keep good pressure on the front of the bird onto the platform so that you don't allow that blade to pull the rear of the bird down and create a, a real issue, break the blade or, or worse. Now I'm just going back to trim up the tail, got a good grip on the bird. Again, there's no support under that area, so you need to be careful in that area. Now I'm gonna do these 30 degree angle cuts. And uh, I've had comments that people, you need to be very cautious on these type of cuts. You don't have to use the bandsaw to take this wood off. I've just done it over time and uh, I just do it very cautiously. So I'm just taking a little bit of a, an angle cut under the side pocket here. And this cut is not a, an issue because you've got the bird solidly on the platform. You just need to go slow and kind of round that right into the breast. You don't have to take wood off under here. I mean, if it's a gunning bird, you want to keep as much wood in contact with the water as possible normally. Now, I'm going to leave the primary areas alone because I don't want to take too much wood out there, but I'm going to take a cut here. You can see those guidelines. I'm just trying to take an angle cut to begin to hog off wood on the body and round the body. Just a couple of cuts. Uh, it just saves a lot of grinding later. This second cut is the one where you need to be extra cautious because you don't have as much support. Uh, you can see I've got the bottom of the decoy resting on the angled platform, but there's just not quite as much flat support there as before. And that's all I do, two cuts like that on each side, and that is enough for me, and then I'll do the rest with my grinding equipment. Just make sure you don't bind the blade. And as I get back to the primaries, I'm curling out again so that I don't remove too much wood back there. Just taking a few slices off the breast area there. And then taking that second angle cut here. Keep your hands out of the way of the blade. You can see the body is kind of rounded. There's still a lot of wood to be removed, but we've got a head start. Now I've got the head block cut to width, and now I'm just gonna cut the profile out. I always start at the bill and approach that very cautiously because it's so easy to bandsaw, tip off the bill and end up with not enough material there. And I'm not going to speed this video up because I just want to show you the speed at which I'm cutting. I, you can see I'm working the blade back and forth there to give myself a little relief to allow me to turn that sharp corner going up the forehead. 
And you'll see I do that along the way where there's a real sharp angle to be made. You just have to slowly work the blade back and forth, open up a little wood around the area uh, to allow you to turn the blade. It's, it's kind of bandsawing 101, but if you haven't done much of it, it's, uh, I thought it's worth mentioning. You can see I've got a little live wood on that side, but I'm going to round that side off. And so I wanted to use this nice piece of Tupelo for this head. Here's another sharp curve area. So you can see I'm kind of going back and forth with the blade and then opening up a little bit of room for that blade to make the turn. You can see the blade moving around even with that uh, back and forth. So I'll speed this up and we can finish this cut uh, in double time. This is another area at the tip of the bill. I'm being very cautious because I want to leave a little bit of an indication of a nail down there. And uh, here again, there are some sharp angles under the throat of this particular bird. So I'm going to go at this slowly and make that sharp bend. All right, the head's done. Now I've marked the eye hole on both sides using the pattern, and I'm just gonna use a small diameter drill to drill in from both sides to locate those eyes. Just give me a reference hole later after the carving has been done. Okay, I think we'll call that a wrap on session one of carving the Drake wood duck. We've got the pattern made together. We've got the decoy band sawed out, ready for carving. Next time in session two, we'll start working on the head, rough shaping the head, and we'll go from there. Until next time, Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to all of you.